Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening and welcome to my Monday night Facebook and YouTube live. And I have a very special guest tonight. So I have Brenda Davis, R.D., who is a pioneer. She's an expert and pioneer in the in the sort of field of plant-based nutrition. Beyond uh, now, I'm learning even more. We were just chatting a little bit, Brenda and I, before we came, and I went, "Wait, we're going to just hang on until we go live because we need to hear this." Because Brenda's been doing this a long, long time, and she is an absolute tre treasure trove of information. She is the author of twelve books correct, Brenda, including the one that's just come out that we're going to be talking about tonight, right. um, all on, on, on plant-based nutrition. Um, she is, you know, uh, has, has helped me so much over the years. I was actually saying to Brenda that this book, Becoming Vegan, was is very, very well thumbed um, because really what uh, Brenda really goes into here in in-depth, this is not surface stuff and surface level stuff here this is really deep this is it takeaway information like you all need to know so welcome we're so happy where where are you located where are you um i am so delighted to be here thank you so much for inviting me it's such fun i'm i'm really looking forward to meeting all of your fans and uh, i am in calgary alberta canada oh my and, god yeah, and and it was minus thirteen Fahrenheit when, or not Fahrenheit, so so sorry, uh, centigrade when I woke up this morning, which is what twenty something uh, Fahrenheit. <laughs> wow, and you're just being kept warm by all those be that beautiful nutrition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although this afternoon it was just lovely, I went for a walk and it just felt beautiful out, but I had warm clothes on, of course. <laughs> yeah, they say that there's no such thing. I was told before actually I went to visit. Um, uh, I went to Banff Nat National Park. I did a wellness retreat uh, up in Lake Louise. Stephanie, oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Go on and, yeah. Did that. and um, <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh, because I, you know, I do get, tend to get cold. And somebody said, there's no such thing as cold weather. There's only not being dressed correctly. Uh, right. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Absolutely. I made sure I was right. until it hits about minus fifty. Then, <laughs> oh, oh, just, then, 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 then there is cold, exactly. Anyway, I want to welcome you all for joining us tonight. Whether you're joining us on YouTube or whether you're joining us on Facebook, you are so welcome. You're in for an absolute treat. So Brenda is a guest that I've wanted to have on for quite a long time. We are on exactly the the same page with with everything nutritionally um uh, but you know brenda's been in the saddle for a long long time doing this as i say 12 books later with a brand new book which is just about to come out on november the 17th and is probably literally has to go on your holiday list on your wish list you can pre-order it we'll talk about that in a moment Catherine will pop in the link when we get to that but before we do just as um, a little heads up to everybody, um, we are going to, I'm going to be asking Brenda a few quest choice questions that I think you'll probably find really helpful, all of you tonight. Then we're going to leave about 10 to 15 minutes for some quick fire um, questions from you. Now, you are going to have so many questions that we're not going to be able to get to all of those questions, but I, or actually Catherine, who's moderating, will try and pick questions uh, that reflect maybe what a lot of you are saying, so it's sort of fair, useful questions. So we'll get to as many of them as we can. And what I did want to say is that please make sure if your question isn't answered or if you're like, oh my gosh, I need to, you know, you just happenstanced upon this and you want to learn more, make sure you jump into my uh, private Facebook group, which is called Healthy Living and Weight Loss for Women Over 40. Healthy Living and Weight Loss for Women Over 40. Brenda, that's the kind of age group that I generally speak to. And hop in there. It's a free Facebook group. Lots of information in there. So make sure you hop into that group and, and request to be a member so you don't miss anything. And we can answer, you know, some, some further questions in there. So we see lots of the regulars on tonight. So without further ado, Brenda, we are talking plant-based nutrition. And one of the things that absolutely 
uh, sort of it, it makes me feel that, that I'm really on the a safe raft with you is that one of the things that you speak to a lot and you speak to um, particularly in your new book which is called nourish and again we're going to put the link in and talk more about that is you speak to families so this isn't just plant-based nutrition for for a certain group or a subgroup of people this is you with your solid evidence-based science that I know that's why I wanted you to come on because that's what you're all about is evidence-based science in there's nothing that isn't evidence-based science in there um you speak to being able to raise children being able to raise babies being able to 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 raise the, the whole family so my question to you is before we went on you were saying gosh back in the day when you first started writing about this it was considered some really weird kooky thing would you talk a little bit about that oh i i can tell you it was well it was it was the late 80s when i made the switch to a plant-based diet and i lived in northern ontario i was a public health nutritionist and half of the food groups on our food guide were were animal products and 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 i remember in university in the late 70s how how we learned that a vegetarian diets were okay if they were very well planned but not for children or pregnant women just for adults uh, vegan diets were downright dangerous for everyone and that's that was the extent of my education on plant-based nutrition in university and and i can remember when i made that decision which was a decision that was honestly made for ethical uh you know ethical and ecological but mainly ethical reasons um i was absolutely terrified because i I didn't know of any other uh, living vegetarian dietitians. I mean, I, I had never met a vegetarian dietitian or a vegan dietitian, and uh, and I was scared I would just be ousted from the profession. I like, how could I even use our nutrition education resources because the resources are all based on you know our food guides, which are you know absolutely swimming in animal products, and so it was a. I'll tell you, it was a really difficult decision to, to stay within the profession. I can remember that, you know, conversation I had with myself. I was thinking, you know, if if I leave knowing what I know, uh, what will ever change? Uh, and 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 but I could be considered like a fringy dietitian. People could be pointing their fingers at me. I could I could be you know challenged by my by our boards, our colleges, all of that. And I thought, you know what? You have to do it because if you don't do it, who will? You know somebody's got to do it. And and so I just decided that I I, I had to have the courage to stay and. And uh, yeah, it was it was quite a it was quite, quite an experience to be honest. Wow, uh, how wonderful! I really want to sort of acknowledge you for saying, you know, I had to have the courage to stay, and I really understand because even in this day and age, for me as a nutritionist, talking about the you know this way of eating and the nutrition, there's you know all sorts of you know we there's a lot of discussion that, that, that often goes on. I can only imagine in the 80s, and I love, thank God you did have the courage and that you followed your heart and you were like, you know what, I'm gonna do this in a profession where you, as you said, you could have very easily been marginalized and, 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 and you know, all, all of that. And then, so 12 books later, 12 <laughs> Like, uh, and, and 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 these books by the way um ladies and gents who are watching you know these books are many nutritionists bible by the way you know many of you know dr michael gregor because we've had uh, him on the on i've interviewed him before i'm going to be interviewing him in december um but he you know he will say to people go you know go, if it's a vitamin question or a supplement or something else he'll go just get, 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 get here this is the book go, you know read the book and everything so he's 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 great i know that you and you and you and he are, are are great friends and 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 i i am so as as a nutritionist and somebody who's constantly learning and curious and finding out, it gives me so much solace to know that there are um, individuals such as you and uh, Dr. Uh, Gregor 
who um, just follow the science, who stick to the science, because there are you know, so many crazy opposing um, complicated opinions out there. And so it, it's it's just it's just lovely to have to have that and to have somebody like you, Brenda, who's been in saddle now for decades um, doing this. Well, you know, it was it's so interesting when I made that decision. I remember saying to myself that the one thing that I, I had to promise myself was that everything I, I said would be evidence based. So if I was challenged, I, I could defend my position and I could help others to to move along in the right direction. Yeah. And so I, I you know, I've just always been very careful. And what maybe surprised me the most, I think, is is within very short order. Um, I was speaking at dietetic conferences all over the world um, because my fellow dietitians wanted this information and they were grateful for it because they had vegetarian uh, and vegan clients who wanted to know um, how to do this properly. And, and the dietitians wanted that information. And so we, I, I had nothing but wonderful response and, and uh, I'm really grateful for that. Wow. Well, um, I want to um, I want to ask all of you, my community, my lovely Facebook and my YouTube community, please post some questions. So um, any questions related to the topic tonight and the topic tonight is plant based nutrition for the whole family. So ladies and I'm saying ladies and I don't mean to be sexist if there are gentlemen watching, but it's primarily ladies that I have in my community. So. If you have, if you're a grandma and you've got grandchildren, grandbabies, if you're a mum, if you know mums um, and or you know your, your daughter or whatever, press the share button now because you're going to get information in a moment that's going to be very, very important. So I really encourage you to share this live stream with as many of your friends and community as you want to and say, hey, just come on and, 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 and watch this because you're going to learn some really great stuff. Because I think that, again, as I said to you, Brenda, you know, I, I teach women who are sort of uh, generally 40 and over, 45 and over. And so for me, it's so interesting to speak to, as your new book speaks to, the whole family and really brings in, you know, can you raise a baby, a toddler, a, you know, all the way through? Can you raise them to eat an exclusively plant-based diet? And how can you do that? And is it safe? And is it better? And is it healthier? And blah, blah, blah. So all those, those um, questions that I have are actually answered in your most recent book. So let's just Let's, I, I have some questions that I would like to ask you, and then we're going to let the community ask you questions. But before we get into that, the new book, it's called, everyone, it is called Nourish, and it's coming out, it will be available for purchase on November the 17th. It's available for pre-order now. You can order it on Target, or you can order it on Amazon, all the regular booksellers. I think Catherine is going to um, to pop the link in uh, for us for that book. You can just go and order it right now. Highly recommended. Yes, yeah, Sophie, and if, they, if, if your listeners uh, do order it, they can go on to nourishthebook.com and uh, just show proof of purchase and be entered to win a brand new Vitamix. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah. So you hear that, <laughs> ladies, because you're going to need, if you're not already on an exclusive plant-based diet and you're thinking of becoming on one, you need a brand. And, and I like the way that you said brand new because yeah. one of the lovely ladies in my community, we were all doing a kind of cooking class this weekend. And she said it, hers wasn't quite doing the cashew cheese. And she said it's like a third circa 1930s. And so okay. you, if you're watching, you might want to enter that, that contest, Jewel. Um, all right, so we're getting some really good questions in. So first off, with this with this um, new book, which I've had the pleasure of, of, of you know, reading the, 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 the sort of pre, whatever you call it, the galleys, I think was the old term for it. But you know, whatever. Um, so I love, love that your first sort of three chapters are called health, home, and heart, right? So could you just speak briefly to health, I think, 
is a given. Well, certainly for me, it's a given. But would you speak to why you you covered those three, you sort of couched it, framed it in those three beautiful chapters? Yes, well, um, you know, at the, the big, at the onset, you want to just set the stage. And so this was setting the stage. So discussing the health consequences of a plant-based diet uh, in terms of uh, healthfulness, safety, but also disease risk reduction. And so the first was, you know, the, the health. And then we went on to talk, to discuss the environmental consequences of your food choices. And this is really looking at the consequences beyond ourselves. So what are the consequences for the planet and for, for everyone? Uh, you know, it's really about widening that circle of compassion, if you will. And, um, and then the third uh, section is, is the consequences of our food choices for animals. And uh, this is one that is uh, very precious to my heart. And uh, just going through, you know, the way that we raise animals and, and what our, our alternative choices are and, and all of those things. So, oh, yeah. That's just so beautiful. And, you know, I've always thought, Brenda, that it's, it's just to me, it's the triple win. And it's actually the quadruple win because the health, obviously, without our health, we have nothing. Um, and, you know, the home and the heart is, is, a, is such a huge part of it that I don't often focus on or talk about because I'm also a weight loss specialist. So I was gonna say the quadruple is, it's the health, it's the environment, it's the animals, and you get the weight loss as well. Um, yes. <laughs> but, but certainly the, the, what I hear so, deeply resonating in your words in this beautiful new book, Nourish, is this compassion piece. Mm -hmm. Is this, I think we, I don't know, when we stop and get quiet enough and really become conscious of what's on our plate and our choices, and really it's just having that conscious awareness. To me, it sounds, a, it might sound a little woo-woo, but to me, food has, it does have an energy to it. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, aside from like you, it was a sort of slow awakening of it was the the, um, the ethical, um, you know, environmental um, uh, it, it concerns, which were very huge for me. I wrote my first books were really written about the environment, you know, helping the environment or trying not to harm the environment. Um, but certainly as my journey has gone on, that compassion piece has just deepened and widened and it feels so good to be able to live and i know so many of the, my uh, people in my community are animal lovers and and have so much compassion for animals so it feels so great to be able to be aligned with those values and aligned with that truth and not to have to compromise your health in fact the opposite to help your health so it's just a win 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 right it's or a win 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 you couldn't have said it better and and uh, it, that's i think one of the wonderful things about making wonderful choices beyond ourselves is it benefits everything it it benefits everyone and uh, and and that is what we have to do we we have a responsibility to do as thinking human beings uh as far as I'm concerned, um, it's just shocking that we're still where we're at, um, uh, at in this day and age. Uh, I think that we are, um, you know, we should be, we should be knowledgeable enough at this stage in in our development as a species to know uh, right from wrong, and and, and uh, particularly when it comes to the way that we treat the the other living species on this planet and uh what we're doing i think if there were um you know uh, people from another planet looking down at us uh, they would be horrified oh and, my god uh, yeah yeah you and know we're sorry. Done. it's time to it's time. to recognize that this is wrong and and you know what what's kind of exciting is that we're getting to a point where for those people that absolutely feel they must have animal flesh 
to eat, we're actually getting to the point where they might be able to do that without actually raising and killing an animal, uh, which to me is a very good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And and so we're we're just figuring it out. And I don't think it's going to be that many decades before we're, we've really transitioned because we have to to save this planet. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it it's it, it's 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 reaching that tipping point. I think, isn't it? Just it's simply in 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 terms of 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 the planet. But uh, again, it, 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 it when that it, it's not. I think it's a it's a seismic shift, but it'll be a slow seismic shift. But in in that slow seismic shift, there is there is hope. And 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 honestly, people, you are a pioneer. You are an absolute pioneer of this movement. That you have had, that you had the courage to do what I think many young people even today are like. So you've paved the way for people to make these choices. I just know so many young people, and I can see in the comments here. I have many people in my community who are just so passionate about animal welfare, and it's just the most important thing to them. I can just see the questions coming in, and so it's just such a beautiful thing. Anyway, so we have tons and tons of questions. So I'm going to ask you a couple of quick fire questions first, okay. and and if you don't, I mean, we're going to blast you. Brenda, so buckle up. Okay. And don't mind. <laughs> um, okay. So, first off, um, you know, I, in reading your book, uh, you said, which I love, you you said you go against all conventional wisdom, which I'm like, yes, all conventional wisdom that you see on you know social media all the time, Instagram. But you said macros matter less than one than what we're led to believe. There is this obsession with getting my macros. Could you expand on that a little bit? Well, you know, macros are the energy giving nutrients. So they're what gives us calories. So we're talking about protein, fat and carbohydrate. And, and what's really interesting is the biggest sort of um, or most popular uh, diets today uh, are all basically taking one of the macronutrients and, and emphasizing it. So exactly. is more, more carbohydrate based, a, a paleo is protein based, keto is fat based. And, and so we see this, macros have always been, you know, in the 80s, fat was evil. And, and, and now it seems like carbohydrates have been kind of blacklisted. And so what people need to understand is that the percentage of calories from macronutrients is not what matters. As a matter of fact, if you look at the blue zones, the places where people live the, the longest, healthiest lives, the macronutrient percentages are all over the place. In Okinawa, it's like 80% carbohydrates or more, uh, you know, 10% or less fat and, and, and about 10% uh, protein. And then in in Icaria, Greece, you've got, you know, 35 to 50% fat. And, and, you know, so it's just, they're all over the place. But what is consistent throughout the blue zones or, you know, these wonderfully healthy places are the sources of the macronutrients tend to be whole plant foods. And so when you get your macronutrients along with fiber and phytochemicals and antioxidants and plant enzymes and plant sterols and stanols and all of these healthful components that are packaged in, in plants, uh, you do well. Uh, and, and so, I mean, certainly you need a sufficient protein, you need sufficient essential fatty acids, you need sufficient uh, carbohydrate for the functioning of your brain and everything else. But when you eat whole foods, they come with a wonderful complement of all of these macronutrients. And they, it, it, you know, whatever, you know, combination you eat is, is generally reasonable. So we don't need to focus on percentages of macronutrients. We need to focus on sources of macronutrients. Where are they coming from and where you want them to come from is whole plant foods. Yeah, fantastic. I love, I, I just love that because it just flies in the face as you say, that's so interesting that you say every major diet is based on taking it, one of the macros and running with it. And even the term macros of people like, are you getting your macros in? And I also, in, in that, I think that section of your book, I read that you said, 
you know, there's a lot of questions about, you know, am I get you, that you answer, you pose and then you answer. So everybody really needs to grab a copy of this book, but about, you know, am I, how can I make sure that I get all the macros in one meal and everything? And I think you say, well, look, if you were to eat only rice for the day, only brown rice, well, then maybe then you might be missing, you know, a few of the macros, but there's mm -hmm. sort of, you know, you need to be a little bit more, but I think the obsession with sort of counting it and making sure that you get it absolutely perfect and right, vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, also particularly for a plant-based uh, diet is, is is not necessary. Yeah, Sophie, and really what people need to focus on is getting a variety of foods from the various food groups. So, you you know, look at getting uh, vegetables and fruits and, and, and some sort of legume in your meal and maybe some nuts and seeds and a little bit of uh, either whole grains or starchy vegetable for the for the energy source and when you do that uh it did they those you know macros just take care of themselves it's just not yeah. an issue absolutely so um gosh there's so much that we could go into here we could talk for one hour on fats proteins and carbs but i want to get to the i'm going to get to the questions however one thing popped out for me as did many in your book i had to be very sparing about the things i wanted to ask you um you say osteoporosis now ladies because I've had a lot of questions about osteoporosis. So osteoporosis is not dairy deficient disease. It is a multifactorial disease. Could you explain? Well, your bones are alive. I mean, they're 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 constantly building and rebuilding themselves, and uh, and you need a lot of you need a lot of nutrients for healthy bones, not just calcium. Uh, you know, dairy, uh, the dairy industry has always kind of paired themselves with, you know, prevention of osteoporosis and building strong bones and all of that. Uh, but the research, you know, is, is a little shaky on that. And in fact, uh, we do need calcium and we need a, you know, reasonable amount of calcium, but we need vitamin D, we need vitamin K, we need potassium, we need magnesium, we need, you know, vitamin C, we need zinc, we need a whole lot, even essential fatty acids. We need protein. We need all of these nutrients to build and maintain healthy bones. And, and yes, it's true that dairy is quite a rich source of calcium. So you get a 300 milligrams of calcium from a cup of milk, you absorb about 32% of that. So it's, it's a reasonable source of calcium. But, but you know, you have to realize that even in Paleolithic times, we had uh, experts that were estimating uh, average nutrient intakes in Paleolithic times. And the average Paleolithic eater ate between 1,000 and 2,000 milligrams of calcium a day without drinking the milk of any mammal other than, you know, you know as an adult, certainly. Um, every animal, every mammal, I should say, produces milk that is, you know, just so beautifully designed to nourish their offspring. And, and for humans, human milk, um, normal human weaning is two to four years. So, so humans would receive breast milk for two to four years. Uh, when you look at the milk of a cow versus the milk of a cat versus the milk of a human, they're all quite different and they're beautifully designed to do what they need to do in that species, to grow the size of brain we have, to, to grow you know, the muscles that are required in a very large animal. And, and so it, you know, it makes a lot of sense to think that those milks are meant for those species. And we don't need cow's milk any more than we need moose milk or dog milk or cat milk. Yes, it's a good source of calcium, but we can get calcium from all sorts of plants too. And it makes so much more sense. To me, it defies rationality to assume that humans would require the milk of a cow. It doesn't make sense. Wow, well, when you put it in those terms, when you put it in the like the, the milk of a, a, a dog or a cat, it's like, oh my gosh, it just <laughs> absolutely. Now we have so many questions um, that I'm going to get to these questions. I want to say before I get to these questions, because I'm seeing some of them here and I'm going to just roll through some of them. But ladies and gents, grab a copy of 
the latest book, Nourish, because this is going to give you the, the wonderful thing about uh, Brenda Davis is that Brenda gives, there is so much information in this book. It is what it, it is. You just get so much. Every uh, question that you have about nutrients and, and the macros and the micros and every single question that you have, because I've seen the, I've scrolled through these questions, I can promise you is answered in this book. And it is a beautiful gift. It is a gift for you. It is a gift for those you love. It is a wonderful holiday gift. And also there are recipes in there. I was just looking for the book. I've got, well, they, they've arrived, and but I don't have one right now. Oh, today. well, don't worry, because we're going to post a lovely picture. So okay. let's get started. So, um, okay, here's one. Uh, Stephanie says, how to stay full and satisfied on a plant-based diet? I've got some answers for that, but quick fire, have you got a, a short-ish answer for that? Oh, eat a lot of food. And, yeah. and you know, yeah. the thing is, is that what, what is satiating is, is fiber, uh, is getting a little bit of fat mixed in. I mean, when you eat, when I eat my bowl of salad, that's like six cups of greens and, and some beans and some, you know, grains and, you know, my salad at lunch, I had sprouted lentils and I just had, it was just a huge bowl, a few bits of avocados, some seeds, a really nice tahini lemon dressing. And you eat this massive mound of food, your stomach's only so big. Uh, that's the thing to me about plant-based diets is they're more filling than omnivorous diets because there's so much higher in fiber and fiber and, and just that volume of food. You, you can eat five or 600 calories of, of, of plant foods and fill your stomach to the brim where you get like this much of animal products um, and you're still hungry. I, I think it's just not not a, a difficult thing to get no. to get uh, satiety with with plant based foods. Now, the one thing that I would say is is include some starchy vegetables like a sweet potato, include some beans in your meal. And when you have the, the uh, a little bit of starches, either grains or starchy vegetables and, and a good amount of legumes, uh, you're gonna feel pretty full. Get in a little fat in your nuts and seeds and uh, your tahini dressing or whatever the case, some avocado, and you'll be stuffed to the brim. I have to say, uh, I'm the same as you. I eat, and those who are in my my uh, coaching program know, I eat a salad like this, a, a bowl of salad, almost like the size of my head. And it is part of everything you've just said. It's just whatever greens I can find. There's sweet but root veggies at this time of year, avocado seeds. I make all these delicious oil-free dressings, grain, whole grains, and I'm so full and satiated by the end of it. And the other thing is that I love the fact that I don't crash later in the afternoon. I don't, uh, because I have the starches, the complex uh, carbs, it just keeps my energy really steady for the whole afternoon. So not only do you have the satiety, but also it's lovely to feel that you're not gonna have that awful crash. Uh, absolutely, and I just have to add one thing that I didn't mention at breakfast one of the the things that i do is i try to stick to intact whole grains as much as possible in breakfast in salads at dinner and what i find is when you eat an intact whole grain like a kamut berry or a sprouted black barley or whatever you know whole grain you've got it takes your body so much longer to break it down and it just that your blood sugar just gradually increases and it keeps you full so much longer than if you're eating some processed box cereal. Um, and I've had people comment about that so often, they just can't believe how full they feel right to lunch when they eat intact whole grains as opposed Absolutely. to more processed whole grains. Oh, it's, it's so true. It's like the old school breakfast cereal, you're hungry an hour later, starving. Yeah. And mm -hmm. even, um, you know, I love, I don't know, uh, whether you ever eat these, but I like oat groats, you know, because those are just that. I eat them pretty much every day. So oh, you do. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And you just have to soak them, whatever. Oh, <laughs> so, Stephanie, that's answered your question. All right. <laughs> um, I understand lack of iodine or iodine can be a concern for vegans. Suggestions. 
Yes, yeah, so vegans, you see, and mo most people who are omnivorous get their iodine from dairy products, from fish. Uh, those are huge sources. And the only reason dairy products are huge sources is because they use iodine to sanitize the equipment they use to milk the cows. And so the milk ends up with a lot of iodine in it. Uh, so for vegans, the primary sources then would be iodized salt, which a lot of vegans prefer not to use. They'll tend to use, you know, some sort of um, fancier salt like Himalayan pink sea salt or whatever. And, and then the other uh, source is seaweed. And a lot of people aren't big fans of seaweed. And so it is possible for a vegan to be too low. And so if an adult vegan needs about 150 micrograms, if you're pregnant, you need to about 220. If you're lactating, about 290. And so this is, you know, a, a fair bit. Now it's easy and peasy to get that amount if you're using, say, a little bit of kelp powder. All you need for 150 micrograms is about a sixteenth of a teaspoon of kelp powder. Uh, but if you don't use any seaweed and you don't use iodized salt, you should probably be using iodine drops because you, otherwise you'll end up deficient. And, and an iodine deficiency affects your thyroid function. Right. So you need iodine to produce thyroid hormones. So it can cause hypothyroidism, all sorts of nasty things. Beautiful. Great, great answer. Thank you so much. Super helpful. Okay, Kathleen says, I have an eight-year-old grandson who is the pickiest eater and won't even try to eat oatmeal. One good thing is he, he likes fruit and tomatoes. What do I feed him that will give him protein plus expanding his diet? He is so used to sugar processed foods that his parents feed him. But when he's at my house, I don't have that stuff in my home. Yes, and, and so it, it, it can be tricky when a child is being raised on fast foods and, and these very hyper palatable foods, so deep fried and salty and sweet, it messes with their appetite control center, it messes with their taste sensations, and, and they don't appreciate the flavors of real food um, the way they should. And, and so it can be really tricky. And one of the things that I would suggest would be to try as much as you can, an eight-year-old is, is old enough to, uh, you know, bring them to the market. Let them help you pick out, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables. Uh, if you have a garden, get him to help you in the garden. Get him to help you grow some sprouts and let him, you know, see how they grow. And, you know, if you're growing sunflower sprouts, let him cut them and pick them. And uh, kids tend to be more willing to taste what they've had a hand in preparing. And so that can be one thing. And, and uh, in terms of protein, what can you provide for protein? A lot of kids, um, are, they like hummus, they like uh, pea soup, they, you know, they like these kinds of legumes. But if you must, um, you know, the other thing you can do is, is have some, I don't know if he'll eat tofu, but some of the veggie meats as options for him. Uh, and I know people be maybe be horrified to think, oh, veggie meats. But there, there's a quite a range. Like in Canada, we have the very good butcher, for example, that tend to use more whole foods in their veggie meats, and they're still very, very uh, wonderfully, you know, flavored veggie meats. And so that's that's just one way. It's like we call it a transition food. But for a child that you're trying to give a, so you've got some salad and some veggies and whatever, and you want to have a protein form when you're having beans and he doesn't want to eat beans, that could be a really simple option that's in your freezer. A, a patty can go in the in the oven or, you know, uh, whatever, and, and you can provide that for him. Then, of course, other things to be very aware of are seeds. So hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, these are very protein-rich foods actually much richer in protein than uh, nuts, for example. Nuts are a reasonable source as well, and nut butters and seed butters. And so when you're preparing, you know, one of the things that I like to do is, you know, when you're making brownies, make black bean brownies. When you're making peanut butter cookie, make chickpea peanut butter cookies. The kids will never even know it's there. They just, they love brownies, they love cookies. And, uh, and so there are lots of ways of, you know, kind of getting them in. The other thing you can do is introduce them to cuisines of other cultures. 
And I think kids sort of like to explore those things and talk about, you know, what the people in that country eat and, and they get excited. You make a tortilla with some sort of black bean and they get to put the avocado and the, and the salsa. And, and so there are lots of, lots of things that you can do to get them interested. Oh, that's such a great, great answer. And I think it's 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 beautiful. I've really tried to raise my my daughter that way to get to really get her interested in those. I never thought about that. Those other cuisines. It's Thai food and all because there's, because there's different um, cuisines are so full of beautiful vegetables. And then you learn to experiment with these different flavors mm -hmm. as well and, and, and to expand the palate. Yes. Um, yes. Be excited yourself. Get excited about these things. And I can still remember, you know, when my kids were little, we would get so excited about the fresh veggies. And if we go to the market or whatever, I, I have to tell you this story because my daughter, when she was about, uh, was she nine years old, she was walking up the stairs just about ready for bedtime. She said, mom, can I have a snack before bed? And I said, sure. She said, well, what could I have? And I said, well, just go look in the fridge, see what you see. And she went in and she said, oh, we, we, we have some spinach. Could I cook the spinach up? And I said, oh, sure. So she gets out and she cooks up a batch of spinach, puts some garlic and some seasoning and sits down at the table spinach. And she takes a fresh wedge of lemon and squeezes it on top. And she's starting to eat her spinach as my six-year-old son walks up the stairs and he goes, huh, is that spinach? And she said, yes. He said, well, is there any more? And she said, no, sorry, I just ate the last batch. And he burst into tears. Oh, and my God. <laughs> and the, the point of this story is children get excited about what you get excited about. And, and when you use different seasonings and garlic and lemon and all of these things, they... It, they will that's what they know it's what they'll appreciate it's what they'll want to eat as well um and and so really don't underestimate the power of your example it is you are the you know the number one teacher for your child and and you it, it's amazing what they'll what they'll enjoy if they're exposed to it my kids never really i think the first time they ever saw white rice was in a restaurant they they didn't know it existed because all we ever had was brown, brown or black or red or whatever at home. And so it's it's what they're exposed to. You don't short order cook for your children. Don't ever buy kids meals. You know, just treat them like, you know, like you would anyone else where food is concerned. I always try to have something at the table I knew they'd be excited about for the meal, uh, even if it was a loaf of homemade bread or whatever it was. But they you know, they would eat pretty much anything because that's how it was. Wow, that is so that's so valuable. I really hope everybody gets that if you've got children or grandchildren, because I think I've never really thought about it and you've articulated it so well that it is the excitement. And certainly it's so funny because um, my, my daughter who's 19, she loves cooking now, loves it. And she's really into playing with the flavors and things. But I think it's because she's seen me and my husband, but I get so excited about food. But simple things like, you know, you bring back some beautiful to to tomatoes or tomatoes from the farmer's market in the summer. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at these, you know, and they're so exciting. And, and yeah. she was making some pasta dish. And I said, you know, you could put in, we've got some... Um, you know, a, a jar, I've got, I have a jar of, of marinara sauce, you could add a little bit of that to this recipe she was making. She went, no, 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 no. I would never do that, mom. I'm going to, it has to taste so much better if it's made from scratch. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be so, uh, so anyway, I love that. Mom. Uh, okay, that was <laughs> wonderful. So Kathleen, get him excited. Get You get excited and then he'll get excited. I think that's the message for all you mums and, and, and dads and grand and grandparents as well. Well, my, my four-year-old granddaughter last night at dinner asked me, she was eating broccoli and she said, Grandma, what is the healthiest part of the broccoli? The flower part at the top or the stem? Because she said, I really don't like the stem. I much prefer the top part. Can I just eat the top part and give you all my stems? <laughs> and, you know, I just get it. I mean, just, they just, you know, she's exploring all, she's four years old. That's the sweetest thing. <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, now we we have quite a lot of questions about the Vitamix. So if could you reiterate that if we go to your site, your website, and yes. order the book through your website, you don't then... even have to do that. All you have to do is order a book and have your receipt. Like let's say you order from whatever Amazon, Amazon yeah. or whatever. So you'll get a receipt. All you have to do is scan that receipt. You just put your name and your contact, whatever it on our website, nourishthebook.com. Go to the pre-order page and you don't have to pre-order from there or anything. You just have to put your name and your phone number or whatever it is and, and a little scanned you know, whatever of your receipt and you'll automatically be entered and you get a little free um, downloadable book as well with some bonus recipes and some extra information uh, as well. So you get the free little bonus and you get entered to win the Vitamix. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Um, so Jill asked the question, there seem to be three editions of the book Becoming Vegan. Which do you suggest or or I'm going to ask, uh, add to Jill's question, would you just recommend the new book, Nourish, because it's going to have the similar but updated information? Well, um, you know, I have to I have to say that Nourish is definitely has updated information and it, but it's designed a lot for sort of the growing years. So pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, uh, becoming vegan is is sort of a, a a bigger, more comprehensive the comprehensive edition, which will go through you know the senior years, adults, more about uh, chronic disease, but it also goes through things like overeating, undereating, eating disorders, sports nutrition. So it's more if you're an adult and you want a complete guide for adults, becoming vegan is is the book. Uh, if you're raising a family, thinking about raising a family, have grandchildren, uh, you know, anything to do with sort of the growing years, nourish is definitely the book. But even adults who are, you know, uh, don't have children at the, you know, or children are grown or whatever, will get a lot out of nourish. That's wonderful. So I think that's great. So nourish for, you know, if you're for, for, for the family, definitely nourish if you're maybe nourish for, for your grandma, uh, for your, you know, kids who are raising children. And, um, and so you get both. Now Jill did, and you can get both, I would recommend you get both. Which edition of becoming uh, vegan. That's what uh, Jill wanted to know. Well, the comprehensive edition, the big difference between the comprehensive and the express is the express is a, a quicker read for the general consumer. Um, the becoming vegan comprehensive is, is the completely referenced um, a more detailed version for health professionals and for people who, you know, it's used in college or university courses and it, and those sorts of things. But it, it also is for people that just are really curious about nutrition and like details. And uh, they, they'll want the comprehensive edition if they're in that category. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. So Leah said, I think this is a great question. What, uh, Brenda, what did you serve, or I guess what are you going to serve as your main at Thanksgiving? Okay, well, first of all, Thanksgiving has come and gone in Canada. Oh, it's in October. However, well, she said, what did you serve? <laughs> but I, I always, I mean, I do a very traditional Thanksgiving dinner. So this is my, my menu pretty much every year. I do, and the recipe for this that I'm going to tell you about right now is actually on my website, brendadavisrd.com. But I always do this stuffed tofu creation. And what it is, is basically you take the biggest sieve you can find, uh, the biggest colander you can find. And uh, I use probably an 11 inch colander or 12 inch colander. I mash up about four or five pounds of tofu, season it, medium firm tofu, season it beautifully with, you know, that kind of poultry type seasonings. And then I take a piece of cheesecloth and I lined my colander with the cheesecloth I pat the tofu all around and then I put another layer of cheesecloth and another bowl on top with something heavy inside the bowl and it sits in the fridge for at least 24 hours and it sets in this sort of circle shape and then I, I remove the bowl, remove that 
that inner layer of cheesecloth and I stuff it with stuffing. And our, I use a very traditional family stuffing that, you know, traditionally it had sausage, it had all of these, uh, you know, apples and mashed potatoes. And it was um, fantastic stuffing, very moist. And I just do a vegan version of that stuffing. And uh, so I've got, I've got, and then you basically you flip this tofu thing uh, on a pan and you bake it for about two hours. And then I do all the traditional company, you know, accompaniments, mashed potatoes. We do a sweet potato casserole. We do uh, green beans, um, uh, Brussels sprouts. And then in our family, it's also very traditional to do mashed carrots and turnips and parsnips. Oh. And, um, and so some people roast them. We've always done this traditional mashed version of it. And the other thing our family is always, and of course, homemade cranberry sauce and homemade gravy. Um, and then the other thing our family has always done, which is a little different, is we've always done a fruit salad with whipping cream. And so that goes with this meal. And so our fruit salad is with pear cashew cream. And pear cashew cream, I can about 30 jars of pears uh, at the end of you know the summer, um, the autumn when the pears are ripe. And, and I just take, and it's just in water. I just can them in water and I just mix a can of those with, you know, about a cup and a half of cashews, just um, broken cashews and a little vanilla and it makes like a whipping cream. And it is fantastic on pumpkin pie. The more cashews you use, uh, you can also drain the water out, just use the pears and cashews to make it very thick. So it's more whipped cream or you can make it thinner and make it a thinner pear cream to go with desserts. But I do somewhere in between for the fruit salad. And so that's our traditional dinner. It's very similar to what we had growing up as a kid. Uh, although ours is a tofu turkey instead of a uh, an animal turkey. Oh, wonderful. Now this recipe, because you've got me, you've got us all thinking now. So this, because I can visualize it and see it, this sort of round thing. Yeah. Um, is this recipe on your website or in your book? Or it's, is on, you just on the it's just on the website. It's a little, you know, because it's it, there's a number of steps in it. And then and then on the top, I actually based it with a little bit of uh, sesame oil and tamari. And you put, um, I usually put black and white sesame seeds just to kind of make it look pretty. And then, you know, you can surround it with, uh, you know, whatever you like kale and cranberries or it can be it's quite beautiful i remember the one of the first times my mom tasted the tofu turkey we they had a regular turkey we had a tofu turkey my mom had a little piece of our tofu turkey just to try it and she said oh my god she said i like your tofu turkey better than the regular turkey <laughs> <laughs> it sounds delicious. it's fun it's great and it's beautiful and it and it's so similar to what you know you've got this nice protein around the outside and then it's all the stuffing on the inside and a lot of people do you know these stuffed uh squashes but it, it's not you don't have that same protein piece with the stuffed squashes as you do with the tofu turkey yeah. or whatever you want to call it. I love that. I love it and also a stuffed squash you know I do stuffed squash a lot at this time of year but I feel like why I'm very attracted to this, I'm definitely going to try it, your recipe, is that it seems very celebratory. It's something that you would just do, this kind yes, of totally absolutely. Thanksgiving. Yeah. So it's absolutely wonderful. Okay, so this is, oh my gosh, we could go, we, we've only got you for another couple of minutes. So ladies, I'm just going to see if there's any other Oh, this is a good, good one, quick one, probably. Maureen says, which plants provide the most calcium? Well, that's easy. Um, the plants that provide the most calcium are are dark greens that are low in oxalic acid. And, and you know, um, we're looking at uh, not spinach, beet greens or Swiss chard. They're loaded with calcium, but it's bound up with oxalates. And so it's not available for absorption, oh, maybe 5 to 10% at most. Whereas these other greens like broccoli and kale and all, most of the Chinese greens and turnip greens and, and mustard greens, you absorb about 40 to 70% of the calcium. And that that's compared to only about 32% for cow's milk. So the very, very good source. But other good sources, of course, are fortified non-dairy milks. You get about the same amount or more calcium than you do from cow's milk. So fortified almond or soy or whatever kind of milk. Uh, and then blackstrap molasses are a surprisingly concentrated source of calcium. 
but then also beans, especially the white beans, uh, like um, Great Northern beans, uh, uh, white beans, and then um, also things like tofu that are precipitated with calcium are excellent sources. Um, and pretty good sources are things like almonds and tahini. Uh, you get a little bit from figs and oranges. So there's something in each food group that you can get. In the, in the grains group, uh, more of the pseudo grains will be higher, like for example, um, uh, quinoa will have a little more than a lot of other grains. But, but going back to the nuts and seeds, chia seeds are quite a concentrated source of calcium. So in becoming vegan, we have a huge list of minerals and foods, and you can just look down the calcium column and you'll you'll see all these wonderful sources of calcium. But you know, you do, you know, for adults, um, you're aiming for about a thousand milligrams a day, and, and for women over 50 and men over 70, it, it, it gets bumped to 1,200. And that's a lot. And and there are lots of people in the world that think you don't really need that much, even. You know, uh, in Europe, a lot of the recommended intakes are slightly lower than ours. But nonetheless, it's not a bad idea to aim for that neighborhood because we know that vegans who get less than 525 have about a 30% increased risk of bone fracture from the Epic Oxford uh, study. So we want to make sure we get at least seven or 800 and preferably aim, you know, closer towards the, the RDA. And if you can't do it from just your whole foods alone, add in one cup of fortified non-dairy milk and you'll be there. This is so simple. I just want to ask one question. You said tofu that is pre pre precipitated did you say yeah what does when, that mean yeah it just means um uh when tofu is coagulated um they use different they use different kinds of coagulators and one of them is cal calcium sulfate and another is magnesium sulfate or nagari and so when they use calcium sulfate the the calcium content of the tofu is quite high and i noticed uh, the calcium from uh, or the tofu from Costco, they have a pack of three organic. I always buy organic for soy products, but they have a pack of three. And and these tofus in one quarter of the pack package, they have two different types. They're about 360 to 600 milligrams of calcium in a quarter of the pack. It's just unbelievable. So some are quite high, some are a lot lower. So you really have to read the label and look at. So what you know is 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 the the DV or daily value is based on a thousand milligrams. So if a if a label says twenty percent of the DV, it's got two hundred milligrams. Wow. Okay. So everybody, as you can see, we all need to own a copy or copies in the plural of uh, of Brenda Davis's books. And in fact, Nourish is written. You co-author. Uh, nourish, which is really interesting. Uh, with um, could you uh, please? It's it's uh, it's Rish correct? Rish Shah. Rish Shah. and she yeah, she's a pediatrician from San Francisco, and she is just the most balanced thinking person. Uh, I just adore her, and I, we met on an airplane on the way to the Plantrition Project conference. And we just became friends over the years and decided to do this book together. So it's, it was an absolute joy to work with her. How beautiful. And so for those of you who want to grab a copy of Nourish for either if you're a mum or you've, you know, you've got grandchildren or whatever, it's even to me, it's just that beautiful balance of knowing that a, you know, I think she is, a, you know, Stanford uh, affiliate clinical instructor at Stanford, uh, you know, on uh, medicine. Um, she is a pediatrician. So if there's any part of you, because I know when I was raising my daughter, the pa pediatricians were all about, oh, they've got to have, you know, dairy and they've got to have this and they've got to have that. Um, so that you're really solid. You're a really solid ground with Brenda. I, I, yeah, I really yeah. wanted to partner with a pediatrician for this book. Yeah, that was yeah. really important. 
Yeah. So, so do grab a copy of that for everyone you love. Please grab a copy, and then of course you can then hop along to to uh, Brenda's site and then be uh, uh, entered to to um, to win a Vitamix. And then also, I really do highly recommend that you grab a copy of Becoming Vegan because that's all your minute questions that you might have about all the different uh, RDA and what you need and the macro, the micronutrients in particular. There's so much, this is packed with information. So grab yourself one of those too. So um, we're out of time. Brenda, I can only say that we need to have you come back because we've, I, I you I, just, you're such a joy, so inspirational. Your, um, your, your, your excitement about this way of eating is is infectious, and um, and and to me, there is just nothing that is more important than 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 those those uh, th those chapters that you cover in your book, those big umbrella topics health heart and home and so you cover all of that in in the most beautiful way so i just want to thank you for your work and for your contribution um it, on so many different levels brenda um you know honestly thank god for 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 you and the work you've done so i want to thank you very much for, for coming and spending your evening um with with my community and i wish you so much luck with this book we're all going to buy it and get it out there and spread the word and 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 and, and everything and it's going to become a bible i think for so many mums going forward because there is a shift there is a seismic shift uh, i see it every time i go to the market now even in england when i go back there it's like there used to be like a section this big for vegan plant-based food and now there's entire massive sections in That's every awesome. <laughs> market so we need your book though as a bible mum mums need your book as, an, as a bible to help them navigate those little quite all those unanswered questions so um thank you well, and any parting words any part well, of yes and uh, thank you so much sophie i so appreciate being on your show and thank you so much for what you are doing uh to change the world uh, it's just making a huge difference and and I feel very privileged to be doing what I'm doing. It's it's been a lot of fun, and and I continue to learn. And I wish I I could tell you, uh, Reshma and I are actually doing a, um, a a lecture on this topic on Thursday in the UK. But I think anybody can register. And so I need to give you that information because you're your community might be interested in uh, registering. It's a we it's an hour and a half webinar on Thursday, so. That would be amazing. Yeah. Send me the link and I, I sure uh, will. for those of you who are in my group, remember my free group, you have to be in that group for healthy, uh, healthy living and weight loss for women over 40, because then I can post all these links. So make sure you are in that group. It's a free uh, Facebook group. And yeah, I'll definitely post that link. So those of you who are interested, and I have a lot of uh, ladies who and uh, who are in the UK, particularly on YouTube. So so that might be fun for you to go along That's and, and watch. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And we, if we may, we'd love to have you back. Oh, um, I would be honored. <laughs> that would just be amazing. And 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 just can't wait to get my hands on on a hard copy of. I like hard copies of books. Me too. So <laughs> I just do. So can't wait to get my my hands on a copy of that so thank you brenda you're just thank amazing. you thank you well thank much. you so much sophie have a good night Bye.